The original Infant Optics DXR8 is one of the best selling monitors ever made, topping multiple baby registries on Babylist, Amazon, and other retailers. Now, when I talked about it a couple years back, it was great, but I felt that it could use an update. Well, that update is finally here with the DXR8 Pro. Let's check it out. Hey guys, Andrew here with Dadverb. Up until now, the only non-connected monitor that I've recommended is the Eufy Space View. I haven't really changed my stance on that for like two years or so, but I can honestly say that the new DXR8 Pro is my new favorite non-connected monitor moving forward. I do have to note that this monitor was provided to me by Infant Optics and I'm actively trying to get the brand to sponsor more videos along with this entire channel, but it's because this is something that I genuinely believe in and I think it's something that parents will scoop up and enjoy. So to start, let's take a look at what's inside the box. Really, it's pretty simple, which is a good thing. You've got the camera and the accompanying parent unit, uh, the power supply for both, nicely labeled to limit confusion, uh, a zoom lens, a USB plug to connect it to a computer or a power bank, and a screw to mount it for a top-down view. So first, let's go over the camera. Off the bat, the biggest improvement here that we'll notice from the original DXR8 is the quality. We're now looking at a 720p picture, which in comparison to other non-connected monitors in the category is among the best that you'll see. It's much less muddy, not nearly as choppy, and yields a pretty crisp image. Note, this isn't a 4K image, but guess what? It doesn't need to be for parents looking to just drop in on their baby. This delivers on exactly what you need it for, and it's far better than what was previously available to other parents. Comparing the image to Eufy, they are quite similar, but I would give the edge to Infant Optics here. The camera comes with an interchangeable zoom lens, and for a little extra, you can actually get a wide angle lens to add on. It's pretty neat to be able to adapt it for multiple fields of view because you know every nursery is gonna be different, but personally, for our use, we didn't need any of the other lenses that were available. We just like the standard lens that it came with. A lot of connected monitors are locked into a crib view, but here you actually still have pan, tilt, and zoom functions, which is great, particularly uh, when you get into the toddler stage and you want a broader view of the room. So that about covers the camera. Next, let's move on to the parent unit. Uh, in addition to the 720p display, the screen size has also increased to five inches, which is a lot more convenient. At the top is the power and sleep button, along with dedicated buttons for brightness and volume. On the right are your buttons for panning and tilting, zoom, uh, the push to talk function, and then your menu where you can set alarms, add cameras, and more. And I haven't tested it yet, but you can connect up to four monitors here. So that is great for twins or monitoring multiple rooms. On the left is a light indicator that uh, reacts to sounds and crying. It's always nice to have the visuals paired with the sound. And lastly, at the rear is a stand which you can open up and rest along your nightstand or, or any other surface. I do want to make one quick note here that's always bugged me about the Eufy Space View, and that is the volume button, oddly enough. Intuitively, you wanna go this way to make it louder and this way to make it softer. With Eufy, they actually always had those buttons flipped, which I never got used to, so thanks to Infant Optics for getting that right. I mean, overall, this is a great parent unit. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing really to complain about here. Uh, the last thing that I do wanna highlight, though, is the increased signal range, which can now go up to 1,000 feet compared to the 700 feet of its predecessor, so that's a good jump. In testing it, I was actually able to maintain signal all throughout my house. I had to walk uh, a bit down the road before I started to actually lose that signal. And by the way, I've got the monitor linked below. Buying through that link helps support this channel. It's at no additional cost to you guys. So if you do end up pulling the trigger on the DXR8 Pro, uh, please consider buying through the link in the description. Thank you. All right, battery life. That's another thing that you're gonna be considering when buying a monitor with a dedicated parent unit. During testing, I accidentally forgot to plug the jack in all the way. I woke up the next morning to find that the battery wasn't dead, but it had been uh, reduced quite a bit. Uh, and it continued to run for me actually later throughout the morning uh, before I started giving off this chime, uh, warning me of a low battery. So if you need it to, I think it can uh, give you probably around 10 hours or so, probably even more like it did for me. 
As I've mentioned in a lot of previous videos, background audio monitoring is a very important feature that I look for. Um, when the video feed is asleep, I still like to listen for the baby, but unique to the DXR8 Pro is a new feature called active noise reduction. Now this is really interesting because one issue with some audio monitors is that sometimes it blends the background sounds with the sounds from the baby, making it kind of hard to hear. And I particularly found that to be an issue with the Hatch Rest Plus as we used it for sound monitoring. With the Pro, you now have the option to enable the active noise reduction feature to filter out the background sounds like fans or, or purifiers and clearly hear for the baby. If you don't need it, you can just leave that feature off, but it is nice to have in your back pocket. So who is this monitor for? As many monitors as I've reviewed, I've, I've come to find that a lot of parents just don't have an appetite or need for the features of connected monitors like, uh, like Nanit or, or Miku or any of that bunch. They don't need breathing monitoring or sleep analytics. They just want something simple and reliable. Like they just want to hear the baby and they want to see the baby. And that's what you're getting here from a brand that is trusted within the baby product space. I'd say the only downside here is there's no remote monitoring. Other than that, it's a pretty perfect monitor. Also, for anyone with fears of security or privacy, this is gonna be a monitor that you wanna pick up simply because it's not connected via Wi-Fi. The box itself actually declared it as hack-proof, which may be something that parents can take comfort in. Another thing to note is that you're gonna get a lot more reliability out of a monitor like this compared to any other connected option, even my Nanit that I love so dearly. Even that is susceptible to occasional connection drops. That's not gonna be the case here with infant optics. That, that's just the advantage of non-connected option. And lastly, while this is a great monitor for home, it's also a perfect companion for travel. Setup is easy as it is plug and play and you don't have to go through the, the trouble of logging in through an app and, and doing the whole pairing process. You can get your portable crib and your monitor all set up in a matter of seconds. To round it out, I will say that yes, this is a pricey registry item at 199, but it is on par with other options that you're gonna find around Bye Bye Baby and Target and Amazon. I understand that it might be hard to pull the trigger on, on just on any pricey monitor, but I will legit say that if you go with this one, this is definitely gonna be a nursery staple that you will not regret. That's all I've got for you guys. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button down there. It looks like a thumbs up. For more videos and reviews for new parents, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching this video and come back for the next one. God bless, later.